So I'm incredibly proud to kick off this session on behalf of SAGES and EAES. Uh, this is, um, I introduced already Nader, uh, but this um, project was originally uh, created or thought of by Andrea Petrebiesa and Brian Duncan. And this is really was, uh, the idea was to um, feel that they, we felt that there was a perceived need for both societies uh, to create and update guidelines on the management of acute diverticulitis. And as you know, the management of diverticulitis has evolved dramatically over the past 10 years, and the guidelines still struggle with many, many other controversies. So we wanted to uh, also address the needs of our membership, both societies, and really address those gaps. Um, we know also the significant variation in the practices, in your practices, and how you utilize medical and surgical therapies for diverticulitis. So this was a joint initiative uh, between SAGES and EAS, and uh, we really also wanted to collaborate and strengthen our relationship between societies. These are our disclosures. So we really wanted to generate a consensus guideline for the management of acute diverticulitis to really provide guidance to our members on the management. And ultimately, the work of this uh, consensus will be published in surgical endoscopy. So I really want to acknowledge the team that contributed to this huge effort. Uh, we had members, residents, and experts from both societies, a total of 12 experts and 12 residents. And you can't imagine the amount of time and effort they have spent uh, over the past few months to generate this tremendous amount of work. So please, a round of applause to the team that really brought this all together. You, thank you. So the topic of acute diverticulitis was divided up among six different topics, epidemiology, natural history, topic one, topic two, diagnosis, classifications, three, uncomplicated and then complicated acute diverticulitis, emergency surgery for diverticulitis, and then finally, elective surgery. We also had librarians who helped us sorting the literature. So to give you an idea of the project timeline, we essentially had 18 months from inception of the project all the way to the planned publication in September, to September 2018 to pull it together. So incredibly short timeline. And we, uh, from June 2017 is when the, both boards of EAS and SAGES approved the project. And then in July, uh, Nader and I were nominated as the project leaders and assembled the teams from both societies. And essentially we then on, went on to um, uh, select all the team members from both sides and then the librarians pulled the literature. Uh, in August, we had the topics and questions already assigned, pulled the literature, uh, used covenants to sort it out, and then essentially uh, the team started to uh, triage through all the, the results uh, from the literature search, and this was really tedious. We had a calibration session to actually make sure that we were pulling the right abstracts, and we all agreed on how to select those abstracts for inclusion in the final list. And then the final list were generated uh, sometime around August uh, to November. And then the, essentially the teams only had about two months, almost two and a half months, to then sort through all the literature, grade it, summarize it, and prepare for the in-person consensus expert uh, meeting that took place in London. So it was a tremendous amount of work. Not only they had to sort through it, but start generating statements and recommendations. And those of you who voted on the survey that was sent out by SAGES and EAS know very well how many statements and recommendations we went through, because there were a lot of questions. Um, so the plan is after today, we'll have one more uh, DCC meeting in London, and then eventually we'll be able to have a fi finished manuscript, we're hoping, by before the end of the year. So just to review briefly the methodology, so you know how this all came around. The systematic reviews uh, across all six topics uh, use the same inclusion criteria. So we were looking for randomized controlled trials, systematic reviews, meta-analyses, comparative and non-randomized studies, perspective and retrospective case series. But we really were intent on excluding anything that, that included diverticulitis uh, for uh, the colon proximal to the splenic flexure. We also excluded small bowel diverticular disease and any series that had less than 10 patients, including case series, and narrative reviews, commentaries, and editorials were excluded from our review. Then the grading, you know the grade uh, system to classify the literature from high to low, obviously high level one evidence, randomized trials, moderate can include meta-analysis with, uh, with high homogeneity in the results, and then low, obviously expert opinions where we could not find any better evidence. We, in many cases, had to use um, resort to low level of evidence. And then the strength of the recommendation was really based on that level of evidence. And so uh, these are the principles of, of recommending either strong, weak, or, re or no recommendation. No recommendation being for those statements where no evidence could be found. 
And so this is uh, the Delphi methodology that was used uh, at our expert meeting in London. As you can see, the residents essentially presented all the statements and the level of evidence to support the statements and recommendations. And the experts, all the experts attended. We had 100% experts present and voted on all the recommendations and the statements. If the first round of voting was 100% agreement, then we, we moved on to the next question. This was a consensus. If there was a uh, disconnect or we had less than 100%, second round of voting occurred after the resident had a chance to defend the position or present the evidence in more detail, then second round of voting, and then the goal was 70% agreement to reach consensus. And we moved on through all the questions and all the statements. This was a 15 hour long meeting. Uh, so we essentially squeezed three, three days worth of work into one day. Uh, but it was extremely uh, successful and we're very proud. But you can see here the process for each topic, each question, statement where obviously if we didn't achieve um, uh, consensus the first round, second round, and we went through for all the statements and recommendations and also agreed on the quality of the evidence as gathered by the residents. And you can see here, in some cases, we just threw out the statements because we felt it was not necessary or not important. Uh, same thing with recommendations. So we had a lot of editing to do.